Good evening, everyone. I'm Ali Velshi in for Joy Reid. We begin tonight with a quick look back at the evening of January 6th, 2021. You'll remember Congress was back in session just hours after a violent mob pro provoked by the then outgoing president stormed the United States Capitol in an attempt to overturn a Democratic election. And for a moment, we saw something in the Republican Party that we hadn't seen in a while. Rationality. We condemn the violence that took place here in the strongest possible terms. We will not be kept out of this chamber by thugs, mobs, or threats. We will not bow to lawlessness or intimidation. Riders and thugs don't run the Capitol. We're the United States of America. Now, it was then that the Republican Party seemed to agree with something that should be a pretty basic sentiment in a constitutional democracy, that insurrection is bad and that insurrection is a crime. Fast forward today, and that sentiment is nowhere to be found. Instead, the Republican Party has fully embraced the very people who tried to dismantle democracy. In fact, just hours ago, a delegation of lawmakers, including Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, went on a field trip of sorts to the D.C. jail to visit some of those rioters. There were many, many reports of, of how they're being abused um, and how their rights are being abused. And remember, these are pre-trial uh, January 6th defendants. The reason why we're here is because the two-tier justice system has to end. Okay, let's be clear. The reason the rioters are being held at that facility is because they've been deemed dangerous to the community or have refused to obey conditions of release. That includes rioters like Daniel Rodriguez, who drove a stun gun into the neck of the former Washington police officer Michael Fanon, and Samuel Lazar, who's seen on video using a bullhorn to urge rioters to steal police officers' guns. William Crestman, who's a member of the Proud Boys, he's being held because a judge has determined that he's a flight risk. Eric Christie, who was in an hours-long standoff with law enforcement. Images of Christie outside the Capitol on the 6th show a hammer hanging from his belt. He's alleged to have told police when they tried to arrest him, quote, better come here shooting. These are the people the Republican Party has chosen to embrace and to prioritize. These are the people who have, interestingly, made Republicans finally care about inhumane prison conditions, when activists have been sounding the alarm about that issue for decades. It's important to remember, when you hear these lawmakers claim that these incarcerated insurrectionists are political prisoners, that that's not the case. These imprisoned people are accused of committing crimes, real crimes, not political ones. The Justice Department has arrested over 1,000 people for things like assaulting police obstructing an official proceeding, breaking and entering into a federal building, destroying federal property. All of that is illegal. Their actions may have been motivated by their politics, but none of the prosecutions are political. Joining me now is the Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett of Texas. She was one of two Democrats to join that trip to the D.C. jail today. Representative Crockett, good to see you tonight. Thank you for being with us. Great to see you as well. Let's talk about this trip. Why were you on it? You were one of two Democrats on it. What was your purpose in being there? Yeah, there had to be someone that was going to keep them honest. I mean, we know that the people that were going on this trip, especially the one that led this trip, um, they have a little bit of an issue with the truth. Um, so there needed to be someone because you couldn't walk in and film exactly what was going on. And, you know, it's interesting. It's kind of like there's seemingly two versions of what happened on January 6th. I had a completely different experience walking into this jail. And also, my chairman wanted to make sure I call him my chairman, sorry. My ranking member wanted to make sure that there was someone who actually had a frame of reference for what prisons and jails look like and what those conditions can look like. And that would be someone like me, considering the fact that I've done criminal defense for almost two decades, and also I've been a civil rights lawyer. Let's talk about what you saw while you were there. We heard a little bit of what Marjorie Taylor Greene suggests that she saw. What did you see? I saw um, a delegation of elected congressional members that were starstruck when they got an opportunity to finally see the January 6th inmates. I saw privileged people, is what I saw. Um, the criminal justice system that I'm used to seeing, 
does not afford them tablets, tablets that allow them to end up with a number one song on iTunes because they're able to record or they're able to text their family members whenever they want to. Um, I've never had a client that had the ability to access a laptop for weeks um, so that they could review in the privacy of their single cell jail um, their discovery. Uh, the the privilege that I saw was actually quite astounding, even though we were supposed to talk about or review how bad the conditions were. If anything, I have never seen a jail that afforded so many privileges to anyone. And as I said, I've been licensed in Texas, Arkansas, and in federal courts for almost two decades. So this is important because you uh, I, I have been a criminal defense attorney. You have seen inhumane conditions, and that's a real thing, right? Bad it's conditions in prison in America is a real thing. And to the extent that there are members of Congress from both parties who'd like to tackle that, it's a separate issue than treating uh, January 6 rioters as political prisoners. Yeah, no. I mean, listen, we know what this was. This was nothing more than a political stunt. And while you're covering this, that is part of the problem. The media continually gives Marjorie Taylor Greene this microphone to spew nonsense and lies. Es essentially, what happened today was a field trip. Um, the, the Republicans got to see their heroes. The January Sixers got to see their heroes. Everybody was kumbaya -ing. I was the one that looked a little out of place, for sure. Um, definitely no one was coming up to me, so excited to talk to me. There was one gentleman that wanted to talk to me. Um, but, you know, what, what's frustrating is the idea that I think back to Nelson Mandela and what he went through. And I've actually walked that prison cell that he was in. He was not afforded these opportunities. So these false... Um, the, these false comparisons that they are drawing, it's really offensive because we have real issues in this country. We have real political prisoners. We we saw what happened with Brittany Griner, and we saw where the Republican Party was on her actually being released. They were against that. They felt like that was problematic. Um, yet under these circumstances, for whatever reason, they felt like it made sense to have senior colleagues, senior Democrats, go in and sit down and talk to and coddle people that tried to kill them. It did not make sense. Um, and so having somebody like myself and Robert Garcia, who are both freshmen, who were not victims on that day of their heinous crimes, uh, we were the only ones, in my opinion, that were really best suited to actually go in, because it did not make sense to try to put um, my, my members, my colleagues, at risk of something uh, even more tragic happening in this jail. I, just for the record, I've been excited to talk to you uh, all day, and you and I have uh, always enjoyed our conversations. Uh, Congressman Garcia did make the point that he said um, these uh, prisoners are being held in much better conditions than mo most black and brown inmates in prisons across the country. This is a point that you make a lot, that, that black and brown people have been in uh, lousy prison conditions, uh, incarcerated in per capita percentages much higher than pretty much anywhere else in, in the free world for a very long time. If if that were really the topic we were discussing tonight, that would be a good thing. If, if a bipartisan group of, of members of Congress were touring prisons around the country to say, how do we make this better, that would be a good thing. That would be a fantastic thing. That would actually be doing what we were elected to do, which is to solve problems, to make life better. You know, listen, it's still prison. So prison is never going to be the Ritz-Carlton, right? But at the same time, we're talking about is, is Are they living in inhumane situations or not? And I can tell you there is nothing inhumane about this. They were able to freely move about. They were able to uh, communicate without having to worry about a recorded phone call. They had air conditioning, which is something we don't have in Texas. They also, I asked about the, the women in the facility, and I asked them about their access to sanitary napkins. They've got that. That's free. Their medical care is free. A lot of places, they charge you for that kind of stuff. And so so, you know, it's still jail. It, it, I get it. It's never going to be nice, right? But in, in the grand scheme of jails, let me tell you something. Um, I've had a client that died. I don't see someone sitting there and being neglected because they're not uh, they're not heard. They've got literally iPads or whatever they call them, tablets, where they can make a sick call electronically. Um, and they have access to these tablets for... 22 out of 24 hours, the only two hours they don't have access to them is when they're charging them. I mean, it's absolutely insane. This was an excuse for Marjorie Taylor Greene to have another press conference. This was another excuse for them to be able to speak to these January 6th defendants and put their stories together without having to worry about 
them being recorded, which is normally what uh, everyday individuals have to go through when they're going to see their loved ones and their friends. Congressman Jasmine Crockett, always good to see you. Thank you for joining us this Great evening. Great to see you too.